Hey everybody, welcome to 5 Minute Facts. I'm Hunter Avalone, partnering with Young Americans for Liberty, and today, we're going to be talking about the government's involvement in higher education. It's no secret that the cost of college has skyrocketed over the past 35 years. Even after you account for inflation, the cost of higher education has more than doubled from 1985 to today. So what is responsible for these massive upticks of college education? Well, many economists believe that this is due to the good intentions of the government. Starting in 1965, the federal government began guaranteeing student loans provided by banks and nonprofit lenders. Colleges have begun heavily taking advantage of the 85% of students relying on financial aid, usually from the federal government. Because the government subsidizes the cost of education on such a massive scale, colleges can take advantage of something called third-party payer. The third-party payer effect happens when when an institution realizes that the consumers themselves are not paying directly from their own pocket, and thus they don't have much reason to care about an increase in cost. The value of the money being spent by the federal government on behalf of the students becomes almost a bonus to the institution, since students are willing to pay a constant amount out of their own pockets. The cost of college has largely become isolated from the consumer, and since college is considered a necessity, this is a perfect way for colleges to hike up their prices, creating a bloated, unnecessary bureaucracy without the consumer demanding financial responsibility. The fact that so many people receive federal aid on a primarily need basis makes tuition turn into net cost. By subtracting guaranteed financial aid, you will pay as much as you possibly can afford depending on your income. But even net costs are increasing for the average family. The National Bureau of Economic Research published a study that found, with all factors present, net tuition increases from $6,100 to $12,559, and the demand shocks which consist mostly of changes in financial aid, account for the lion's share of the higher tuition. These results accord strongly with the Bennett Hypothesis, which asserts that colleges respond to expansions of financial aid by increasing tuition. In fact, the tuition response completely crowds out any additional enrollment that the financial aid expansion would otherwise induce, resulting instead in an enrollment decline. Furthermore, the students who do enroll take out $6,876 in loans compared to $4,663 in the initial steady state. The college, in turn, uses these funds to finance an increase of investment expenditures from $21,550 to $27,338. Lastly, the model predicts that demand shocks in isolation generates a surge in the default rate from 17% to 32 percent. Essentially, despite the government's good intentions to subsidize student loans, it actually decreases enrollment, it causes an increase in student debt, an increase in government debt, and no increase in the quality of education. So what can be done about this problem? Realistically, a short-term solution would be to force colleges to invest more skin into the game by requiring them to pay back defaulted loans to the taxpayers. This would give an incentive to colleges to provide a quality and marketable education that falls in line with the tuition which they decide to charge. We should also begin to phase out the government subsidies and instead trust the free market to naturally lower the cost of tuition. Yet again, it's obvious that despite its intentions to make college more affordable, the involvement of the government through financial subsidies makes the overall situation for everyone involved far worse.